to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim good news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ all scripture is given by inspiration of god and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of god may be complete thoroughly equipped for every good work second timothy chapter 3 verses 16 and 17. Welcome to our study of the book of 2 Timothy. In our messages of the New Testament, living messages of the New Testament, we've been taking a snapshot, a look at each book, giving some of the key ideas, and then along the way making practical application from these great texts of inspiration. Thank you today for joining us, the Gospel of Christ program. This program is being brought to you by members of the Churches of Christ worldwide. As always, our lessons are available free on the internet at thegospelofchrist.com. You can download those lessons on your computer or if you'd like to have a DVD or a CD or a transcript, we'd be glad to make those available to you as well. And again, we always encourage and invite Bible questions and Bible study. If you've got a Bible question or you're wanting to study the Bible, we'd be more than glad to help you with that. You can contact us from our website or our information at the end of this program as well. Today we think about the great book of 2 Timothy to the young evangelist Timothy who was working in the congregation in Ephesus. 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 3 Paul is now writing to encourage this young man to stay strong, to stay faithful, and he gives him solid proof and reasons how as Christians we can be strong. What's the main theme? I believe 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 1 is the main theme in this book as Paul says these words, You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Paul is writing to Timothy, whom we know, according to 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, may have been a little timid and fearful. Paul says God has not given us a spirit of timidity or of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. And so Paul may have, Timothy may have been a little fearful, a little shy, may have been a little more introverted. And Paul says, don't be afraid, don't be timid. You've got God and you've got the gospel on your side. Be strong in God's grace. It's that grace that makes salvation available that we're able to be strong in. You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Though He was rich, yet for your sakes He became poor, that we, through His poverty, might be made rich. How does grace give us strength? Grace sent Jesus from heaven to this earth. By grace are you saved. Ephesians 2 verse 8, and it is this grace that gives us encouragement and strength as we live the Christian life. Now are we saying grace is a license to sin? Of course not. Paul has already denied that in Romans 6 beginning in verse 1. But friend, let's not discount the grace of God that we do have that available. As we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of His Son Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. And so Paul writes to Timothy who will have to face hardship, who will need to gain up courage and strength to remain faithful. Friend, every Christian can make this such a practical book because as we live faithfully, I'm going to face hardship and persecution and so are you. I know that with such confidence and surety because that's what Timothy says. 2 Timothy 3 and verse 12, Paul says, All who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. It's not a might. It's not a maybe. Persecution will happen for the child of God. And thus, 
Let God's grace, God's love, and the strength given in 2 Timothy help us to maintain our faithfulness to God. Now, just a couple of the key passages that, that encourage Christians along the, the road to strength and grace are found in accordance with the Bible. 2 Timothy 3. I want you to notice verses 14 through 17 as Paul appeals to Timothy's training and his confidence in the inspiration of Scripture as a source of strength. Notice 2 Timothy chapter 3 beginning in verse number 14. Paul says, But you, you Timothy, must continue in the things which you've learned and been assured of, knowing from you whom you've learned them, and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Paul says in essence to Timothy, as you face difficulties, as you face challenges, I want you to continue in. Be grounded in. Let your foundation be built upon the things which you learned and received and heard from childhood. Those things are based on the Scripture, and the Scripture is inspired of God. And then with that same confidence, Paul tells the young evangelist Timothy, whom he is encouraging to be strong, to be bold, and to be faithful, never ever give up preaching the Word. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 4, beginning in verse number 1. Paul says these words, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at His appearing and His kingdom, preach the Word. Be ready in season, out of season. Convince, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires. Because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. They will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. And thus, Timothy is to preach the word. Friend, in the midst of a, a changing world, in a midst where there's so many different ideas and views and lifestyles and, and ways and approaches of viewing life, Paul says to Timothy, here's your constant. Don't ever give up on preaching the Word. Already mentioned, it's inspired of God. It's that which has the ability to save men and women's souls. And so, great encouraging lessons from the book of 2 Timothy. Let's then take just a few moments and let's think about 2 Timothy chapters 1 through 4 and let's highlight some of Paul's words of encouragement to Timothy and to Christians today living faithful to the, the message and the hope of Almighty God. Notice 2 Timothy chapter 1 beginning in verse number 3. Paul says, I thank God whom I serve with a pure conscience, as my forefathers did, as without ceasing I remember you in my prayers night and day. As Christians, we've got to serve God with a pure conscience, and we need to be mindful and prayerful of others at all times. Are we really living the Christian life with a good conscience? Are we living faithful to God every day? as we strive to do the things God wants us to with our conscience in tune with the will of God? And are we utilizing the power of prayer in our help for other Christians? Jesus said in Luke 18, 1, Men ought to pray always and never ever lose heart. The Bible says we're to pray without ceasing. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 17, Scripture says prayer avails much. James 5, verse 16. And so as a Christian, I want to pray for other people. I want to encourage and, and help them. And one of the ways I can do that is the power of prayer. Now, another thing that we want to note from 2 Timothy is that as Christians, we must never ever be ashamed of the gospel. It's God's eternal plan for salvation. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 1 beginning in verse number 8. The Scripture says, Therefore, Paul speaking to Timothy, Therefore, 
Do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the suffering for the gospel according to the power of God who saved us and called us with a holy calling not according to our works, but according to His own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began, but has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. As God's children, we should never, ever be ashamed of the gospel. Remember Paul's words? I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Why not? It's the power of God unto salvation. Romans 1 verse 16. Don't be ashamed of the gospel because when man was at his worst, while we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. I'm not going to be ashamed of Christ because when I was in desperate need, when you were in desperate need of sin, Christ wasn't ashamed of us. He came to this world to die for each one of us. And isn't it amazing? In 2 Timothy chapter 1, Paul addresses in verse 9 God's great scheme of redemption who, who saved us, called us and saved us with a holy calling, not according to our own works, but according to His own grace and works that were in Christ Jesus. Watch this now. Before time began. Now I want you to think about that. Let that sink in just a moment. God in Christ Jesus had a plan to save mankind before time began. Before the first second on the clock of time ticked, God had already made a plan to save mankind. Now friend, if that doesn't express to you the depths and the riches of God's grace and love, I don't know what will. Before God created Adam and Eve, before God created the world, He knew what was going to happen. He knew what was going to be necessary. He knew that the Godhead was going to have to sacrifice by sending God's Son to this world to die for us. He knew that from eternity. And yet He loved me and you enough that He still did that for us. Ah, oh, that's why verse 10 is such a, a rich and encouraging verse. That grace and that plan has now been revealed to us through Jesus Christ so that we can have the hope of eternal life. When Jesus tasted death for every man, Hebrews 2 and verse 9, when He overcame the sting of death and sin, when Jesus became the way, the truth, and the life, when He suffered and, and bled and died for all mankind, God knew from eternity His Son would have to do that. Friend, that's how much God, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus loved mankind. Enough that they knew man would sin, and yet they knew a plan would be necessary to save, and out of the halls of heaven and eternity itself, God made that plan through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, as we think about 2 Timothy chapter 2, one of the great things that we see in this book is that as Christians, if I'm going to live faithfully to the Lord, and if I'm going to do the things that God wants me to do, I need to make sure that in view of God's grace, I don't get tangled up in the wrong things of this world. Notice what Paul will say in 2 Timothy chapter 2, beginning in verse number 4. The Bible says, beginning in verse number 3, You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. Paul says to Timothy, endure hardship like a good soldier. Don't give up. And here's his words of encouragement. Don't get tangled up in the affairs of this world. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself in the affairs of this world. What's that mean? If I'm a soldier and I'm in the military and I'm fighting on the front line and I'm in the, the heat of battle, 
I'm not thinking about what Cousin Joe back home is doing. I'm not thinking about what's going to be for supper at the dinner table that night at home. No. I'm not thinking about all those things related to this world. I'm thinking about fighting the good fight. I'm thinking about staying alive. I'm thinking about defeating the enemy. I'm thinking about helping others who are in the army with me to stay true to the Lord and His cause. That's what Paul is expressing to Timothy. Don't get entangled. Don't get caught up in this old world as you live for Jesus. Do you remember James 4 verse 4? James tells us why this is such a stern warning. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God. Whoever therefore desires to be a friend of the world makes himself God's enemy. Do not love the world or the things in the world. Why, John? For all that is in the world, lust the flesh, lust the eyes, and the pride of life, it's not of the Father, but is the evil one, and the world and the lust therein, or the lust of it. It's passing away. But he who does the will of God, that's the one who will remain forever. Don't love this old world. God said to His Christians, to His people, Come out from among them and be ye separate, says the Lord. 2 Corinthians 6, verse 17 and 18. And so, I need to be strong. I need to not, you know, sometimes we sing, I'd like to stay here longer. And there's a sense in which, as a Christian, to spread the gospel, to encourage family, to reach the lost, to continue to preach the word, we can see, Paul said, even that he, he had a desire to, 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 to stay here at one point. To be with Christ was far better, no doubt. Philippians 1, verses 19 through 21. But we must not. This is where it's so hard. Don't get so attached to this old world that you lose sight of what's really important. What's priority number one? For to me, to live as Christ and to die as gain. Philippians 1, verse 21. Jesus said, priority number one, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. That's the main priority. And those are the things that as we strive to live for Jesus, we remain true to and we keep striving to do so that we can have the, the hope and the joy of that salvation. Now, as we think about that salvation, let's ask this great question. Where is that, that salvation that, that God speaks of? Where's that salvation located at? I want you to look at 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 10. The Bible says, Therefore I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation, watch this, which is in Christ Jesus with eternal Glory. Where's salvation at? That they may obtain the salvation, don't miss this, which is in Christ Jesus. Now, I want you to think about this for just a moment. Imagine that this circle represents Christ. And inside this circle, that's where salvation is. Ephesians 1 verse 3, all spiritual blessings are in Christ. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 2 verse 10, salvation is is in Christ. And so here's Christ. All spiritual blessings are there. Salvation is there. The question then is, how does the sinner who's outside of Christ get into Christ? Well, the Bible tells us specifically. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 27, Paul says, For as many of you as were, watch this now, baptized into Christ, have clothed yourselves with Christ. Here's what you find in the Bible. We know salvation's in Christ. And what you find is Galatians 3.27 and Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 4 both teach us to, to get into Christ, one must be baptized. You never find believing into Christ, believing alone. Yes, we've got to believe, but the Bible says we never believe into Christ. That's not the idea. We're baptized into Christ. Must a person believe? Sure. But that's not in and of itself the culminating point at which one gets into our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, as we think about 2 Timothy chapter 3, some of the things that jump out in this text and that really encourage us along the lines of doing exactly what God wants so that we can be strong and so that we can be sure not to give up 
as we mentioned earlier, is the inspiration of Scripture. Let's talk about that for just a moment. I want you to look again at the inspiration of Scripture mentioned in 2 Timothy 3, verses 16 and 17. The Bible says all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Where's our strength to be found? In God and in His Word. The Word of God has the power to give each Christian strength from day to day to live faithfully, to be encouraged, and to never ever give up. What makes this, what makes the Bible, what makes this book so strong and so powerful? Friend, this book is the very Word of God. The God who spoke and the world came into being, the God who spoke and formed man out of the dust of the ground, that same God spoke. And what came off His breath is recorded in the Bible. Inspiration is a very unique word in and of itself. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Inspiration is a combination of two Greek words. It's a compound word. It is the word theos, which is the Greek word for God. And then it is the word panoustos, which literally means this, to exhale. What does inspiration mean in the little Greek? God literally exhaled. And on that breath that came out of His mouth were the Scriptures. Ah, oh, what a powerful teaching about inspiration. Psalm 119, 160, the entirety of your word is truth. Now, don't just notice about inspiration though. Notice about the prophet of God's Word. All Scripture is given by inspiration and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be complete. What's great about the Bible? Where do I get strength from God's Word from? This book has the power to help us be complete and profitable in the sight of Almighty God. Now, again, we want to emphasize in 2 Timothy chapter 4 the need to stay true to the teaching of this book. 2 Timothy 4 verse 2, Paul said, Preach the Word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. What must the Christian do? when he begins to teach and preach and tell others about Jesus, stay true to the book. We always need to ask ourselves, is there any word from the Lord? Jeremiah 37 verse 17, or as Paul said in Romans 4 verse 3, what does the Scripture say? We've got to speak as the oracles of God. 1 Peter 4 verse 11, we've got to be ready to give a, a Bible answer. Be ready always to give an answer. 1 Peter 3 and verse 15, and thus, we must study so that we can be approved by God and so that we'll know how to answer every person. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 15. Then I want you to notice a tender passage found in 2 Timothy chapter 4 that tells us about the, the heart of the Apostle Paul and, and what his longing and desire was. Notice 2 Timothy chapter 4, beginning in verse number 6. Paul says, For I am already being poured out as a drink offering. The time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight of faith. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me a crown, the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only. But, to all, but also to all those who have loved His appearing. What was Paul's desire? Paul says, Timothy, I'm being, my life is like a drink offering. It's being poured out as a sacrifice to God on the ground which cannot be gathered up again. Time's running out. The end is drawing near, Paul said. And then he encourages Timothy by saying, I have fought the good fight. I have kept the faith. I am finishing the race. I have finished the race. Therefore, since that's the case, I have that crown of life that the Lord has promised me. But then He says these words, and oh how, they, oh, how they encourage each of us. The crown of life, which is given to Paul, not only for me, but to all those who have loved His appearing. Friend, as we think about 
2 Timothy. And as we think about the message of being strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, let's do that in view of the hope of heaven. If then you are raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. Jesus said in John 14, 1, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. Were it not so, I would have told you. There is a place called heaven. It is a place of eternal rest. There remains therefore a rest for the people of God. Hebrews 4 verse 9. And friend, you can go there. And you can let God want you to go there. God wants you to live in heaven. God wants you to be saved. 1 Timothy 2 verse 4. Have you made that decision? Friend, we ask you kindly, but we ask you in view of your eternal soul. Have you decided to become a child of God? Remember, it's God's grace that makes salvation available. By grace are you saved through faith. Ephesians 2 verse 8. That grace has appeared to all men in Jesus Christ. Titus chapter 2 verses 11 through 13. Salvation is found in Christ. 2 Timothy 2 verse 10. Have you obeyed your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Jesus clearly said, it's not everybody that looks up into heaven and says, Lord, Lord, that's going there. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Will you do the will of God today? Will you obey the gospel of Christ so that you can have the hope of heaven? You may be saying, well, what do you mean obey the gospel? What does it mean to, how do I become a Christian? Friend, God's plan is not hard. It's plain and it's simple. You've got to hear the word. Romans 10, 17 says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Once you've heard what the Word, the book, the Bible says, you've got to believe its message. Jesus said, unless you believe that I'm He, you're surely dying in your sins. John 8, verse 24. Having believed, you've got to repent. Jesus said in Luke 13, 3, unless you repent, you'll all likewise perish. Having repented, Jesus said you must confess Him as Savior before men. Matthew 10, verse 32 and 33. And to get into Christ, to be saved, Jesus said, He that believes and is baptized will be saved. Have you been baptized to be saved for the remission of your sins? Friend, again, we encourage you and thank you for visiting our lesson today. And as always, we hope you'll join us next time as we think more about the gospel of Christ. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, radio, and Internet. Our motto is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about the lost souls, not your wallet. We encourage you to visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials as well as audio and video copies of our lessons. If you would like to have a copy of today's lesson, please visit our website and fill out a media request form, or you can email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com. Call us toll-free at 1-855-458.